for a second, I thought you were about to weigh in right now. Man, you, you're fight ready, Angie. What's going on? <laughs> uh, I didn't get to drink my water yet. <laughs> Got to stay hydrated. Looking great, feeling good. How, how's everything? How's the vibe in Vegas? How are you doing? Good. It's the normal vibe. You know, a lot of uh, uh, hurry up and wait. Uh, a lot of hanging out in the hotel room, uh, wishing that it was time to weigh in and eat yet already, I mean. Um, but, yeah, the, the vibe's been chill. Uh, everyone on the fight card seems really happy to be here. And I think that's always the case when you have a card like this. Where there's a lot of people trying to make names for themselves. Uh, this is one of those cards where you see a lot of up-and-comers just kind of bursting onto the scene. And... Um, that bonus is up for grabs, so everyone's kind of feeling themselves right now. <laughs> for sure. And it doesn't hurt to have an established fighter, a young veteran, if you will, to kind of, you know, carry the card also and, and, and have some name recognition on that, that, that main card. How does it feel that the UFC recognizes that? So does ESPN Plus, that they put you on there to lead into the main card because they know that you and Luan are going to probably, you know, bring down the house. Yeah, I, I've, I've been calling it in my head the people's co-main event. But uh, I think um, I think it's going to be a crazy fight. And the way that she fights, the way that I fight, I think it's um, a recipe for a slugger, for a barn burner of a, of a scrap. And, um, you know, the girls always bring it too, uh, or at least some girls bring it. <laughs> um, but this is, I, I think they put a lot of faith in us bringing it. And that's kind of how I expect the fight to go already. I, I know I'm going to come forward and she is too. So we're just going to crash in the middle and see what happens. Excellent. Can't wait for it. And you kind of beat me to the punch. When you saw that name come across on the contract, any hesitation to sign? Were you excited to say, oh, we're going to mesh well. This is going to really, this is going to be fun. Yeah, I mean, there was a little hesitation just because um, I, I had just met her a few weeks ago, and she was planning on moving or to San Diego, I think, or just coming out to train a bit. And uh, so that, that part always sucks because you get to meet the person before you punch them in the face, and you're like, ah, oh, they're nice. <laughs> but, um, you know, you, you can't turn down a fight just because someone's uh, – maybe going to come train with you, you know? So uh, so it was cool to get the name just because I felt confident about it. Um, and, yeah, it's just it's one of those matchups where you see him in the top ten and you're like, man, that'd be a good one for me, you know? So hopefully I'll be able to show that on Saturday and uh, get that momentum, uh, keep the momentum going from the last fight. Absolutely. How much would it mean to get that win besides cracking the top 10? Because props to her for, you know, defending that ranking. But now it definitely gives you that ability to get right back in there, a couple more title contention before you know it, and it, it gets you back on track where that goal is. Uh, yeah, I'd love that. You know, um, this is it's also a tough test for me because she's young. She's aggressive um, that I would I, I'm proving a lot to myself just by getting in there and beating up on someone like that. So uh, if this is what the top 10 looks like, I, I'm I'm really feeling confident about it. Uh, you have a lot of younger uh, up and coming fighters in the top 10 now before it was kind of like a stalemate with all, all the people from my generation um, who had made it or fought for the title. They were all just bogging it up. But now you have people like uh, Lupi, who I beat, uh, people ha like uh, Richie up there. And I feel like there's a, a, lot of, a lot of names for me to match up against now that I haven't already fought. <laughs> and you have been there, done that. We've seen you main event, on the poster, 25 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever. Was this a little bit of a, it's, it's nice to downshift back to three rounds at all, or do you have a preference? Oh, yeah, three rounds is a breeze, you know, <laughs> compared to 25, 25 minutes. That's a long time. I can't even meditate for 25 minutes, you know, like it, fighting for 25 minutes is long. Um, but uh, it, it's good for me because I have to start fast. I can't 
you know, chill for a round, see what's going on, and then and then start my game plan. I just have to jump in there and get going. And I think um, whenever I get into a fight right as the bell rings, then I usually have a better fight or at least a more exciting fight. That's usually when I get a bonus if I don't lose, you know, or if, or if I don't win, that's usually when I get a bonus. So uh, I think whenever I fight like that, um, I'm just on my A game. And I think this is the type of fighter that's going to bring it out of me. That's excellent. And last for me, you've been in Vegas before. You have a routine, I'm sure. Great team behind you. But I know you're, you're still a student of the game and you love what you do. What, what new tricks, what new, what can you show us this weekend? Any, like, what can we look forward to? I can't tell you that. <laughs> um, I, I've just been, like, putting a lot of, uh, a lot of my, like, uh, time and effort into my grappling. And... Every time I get out there, I feel like it looks a little better. Um, but aside from that, I just think I've been blending everything well. And yeah, I don't know. I just feel more like an MMA fighter than anything. Like when I go to when I go to Muay Thai sparring, I'm like, oh, I'm an MMA fighter. <laughs> this feels weird, you know. And same when I grapple. So uh, I, I feel like I've really come into my own uh, a little more each camp, and this one's going to be uh, more of the same. That's awesome. One follow-up, sorry. Another thing we've been able to see now is you shine on the, the, the social media stuff, on the, on the mic, if you will, with Jessica. How fun has that been and, and added to your game, if, if at all, you guys doing your uh, two straws and everything? Yeah, doing our little two straws podcast. Um, it's really helped me hone my skills when it comes to talking about fights. I feel like my knowledge of fights, like my library and my head to pull from is a lot bigger. Um, and it gives me a lot of things to try in the, in the gym. Like I was, I'll watch something or I'll watch tape on someone and I'll just be like, man, what was that choke? Or man, what was that kick? And then I'll try it in the gym. And if it works, I'm like, oh, that's my move now. So it, that part really helps, uh, just analyzing stuff, being able to do it with uh, such a fun co-host as my training partner, Jessica Penne, you know. She, um, it's, it's been a lot of good uh, practice for transitioning into that after I'm done here fighting, punching people. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you so much and good luck on Saturday. Thanks. Thank you. What with the UFC throwing Brazilians at you? I don't know. Brazil, I thought Brazil liked me, but <laughs> they're like, one more, one more. Let's see what happens with this one. <laughs> um, yeah, um, you know, obviously back at the Apex, uh, fought in, in, in enemy territory last time. Um, how was that experience? And now, now that you've had some time to reflect on that win, how do you feel about it? It was actually really fun. I, I enjoyed going to Brazil. I was, I was sad I didn't get to go somewhere again. For this fight, um, but uh, being in Sao Paulo was fun. Uh, I had a little entourage, and my my coach Johnny and then my teammate Wilson Hayes were both there. They were both from Sao Paulo, so uh, I felt really taken care of. I felt like, you know, I was um, I wasn't on the hit list. <laughs> no one was gonna drop something in my water or, or try to like, I don't know, mess up my gloves or anything backstage. But the Brazil crowd was really cool. There was only one moment that they said, ooh, I'm okay during my fight. And then, and then they were very respectful after that. So I was happy about that. But I had a lot of fun in Brazil. I, I love traveling for fights. I'm hoping to travel for the next one, um, whether it's uh, in America or somewhere else. But like the whole point of of being able to do this is to get out there and meet people. So whenever I'm in the apex, I'm a little sad about the fact that you don't get that fan interaction. You don't get to feed off of their energy in the arena. Um, but this is gonna winning. This is gonna get me that opportunity to do that. And finally, you shut down another young contender. Um, or I guess a little young prospect. It kind of seems like that's your game. You just kind of. You know, they think they're going to get one up on you, and you shut them down. Is it? Is are you kind of? Is this kind of the same storyline coming into this fight? Yeah, she's she's a young prospect. She's trying to shut me down. I'm trying to shut her down. Um, I I think I have the skills to do it. Uh, I think that's. I think if you watch tape, you'll see it in most of my fights that I usually end up on top when it comes up and when it comes to fights like that. Um, 
I'm, I'm just a, I got that dog in me, you know, that's what they say. I got that dog in me. You, if you, if you have any moments in the fight, don't lean on that because I'm going to get a bunch back. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I still think back to that Lemos fight and what would have happened if the judges had seen it my way. I think back to a lot of my close decisions and, um, if anything, that just tells me that I have to push that much harder to to get those wins and to get those dominant wins, to get finishes even. Like, that that's the biggest goal. And if anything, someone who's a little green, who's a little overly eager to finish you, they're going to give you the opportunities to finish them. So I think, if anything, I'm just – it's kind of a blessing that I keep getting these fights because it's like, okay, almost there, almost there, one inch closer. Okay, I'm going to get him this time. And I think that's going to be the thing that really uh, sets me apart from the rest of the strawweights in the top 15 if I'm able to uh, put a couple finishes together in a row. And then finally, uh, it's been five, min five fights since that. I mean, I was fight, um, but also five fights since your last split decision. So hopefully, no more split decisions ever, <laughs> ever, ever. Are, are you are you hoping that? <laughs> I put the split decisions behind me. They they <laughs> they never happened. Um, yeah, I I just. Uh, it, it's something that I can't focus on. It's like it's like the rankings. It's like uh, you know um, whatever. Yeah, I can't focus on things I can't control. What I can control is being dominant or trying to be dominant, being active, being aggressive, uh, not sitting back when there's a low in the fight or taking advantage of those moments, uh, changing things up. Uh, just getting in her face as much as possible. Like those are the things I can control, and whether they see a fight for me or not, like I just have to focus on the performance. So, um, yeah, obviously, hopefully, <laughs> I don't lose in a dumb way like that. But, <laughs> but what I'm more concerned about is just you know how I perform. I know what I can do. I know what I'm capable of. So I just want to put that on paper on Saturday night and and show people that I belong. Hi, Angela. Hey. Um, I'm just curious. There's been some rumors recently about the future of Invicta. Is you know, is it continuing? Is it not? I'm just wondering if you can talk to me about what that promotion means to you and what it means to women's MMA. Um, it was a, a big proving ground. Um, I when I got into the UFC, um, it's ancient history now. But when I got into UFC, I only had one fight. Um, it was some random promotion in backwoods in North Carolina. And then I went on tough. I lost a couple and then got cut. Uh, Invicta scooped me up right away. And because it was such a proving ground, um, I remember back when I would look at what internet trolls say, everyone was like, oh, she's going to do horrible in Invicta. She's going to suck in Invicta. And I was able to win four in a row, get the title, and get back into the UFC. So I feel like the road to come back into the UFC would have been a lot harder if it wasn't for a promotion like Invicta. Every fight is an all-female card. Um, and you get a lot of top contenders on there just because of that. So I, I feel like it was a really important promotion. We haven't really seen them put on as many shows recently. I hope someone snatches them up and gives them a lot of money to keep doing that because it was a really important show when I was coming up. It was important before Tough too because uh, straw weights weren't in the UFC. When I got on Tough, I was like, "Oh man, this Invicta fighter and this Invicta fighter are on the on the show," you know. So I was kind of starstruck just because that was the only exposure I had to female fighters. Um, so I feel like they can keep using that to keep, uh, you know, keep the show going. Uh, I'm working for Cage Warriors right now, and they do a similar thing with the UK fighters or with the fighters in Europe, and uh, they have that long history like Invicta does. So I'm hoping Invicta stays active and keeps doing what they do because uh, that's how you're going to get better and better women in the UFC and in other promotions by having that having that proven ground where they're just putting fights on and bunch of chicks get to fight each other and see who comes out on top. And last and most important question for me, man or bear? Do you, have you heard it? No. The question? Would you be, rather go into the woods with a man or a bear? Be alone in the woods with a man or a bear? Depends on the man. <laughs> Is that what everyone's saying? Well, most women are saying bear. It's 
Yeah, it's a feminist thing, so I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> if the, it was my husband, definitely the man. Strange man or strange bear? Oh, strange man. Yeah, because it's not a man you know. <laughs> <laughs> a stranger. I, should, <laughs> a strange man. I don't know. I'm an MMA fighter. I'm not. I don't scare that easily. Bears, bears will fuck me up. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have a better chance of a strange guy. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned the ultimate fighter. We've seen veterans go back and do the ultimate fighter again. What would Angela Hill in the Tough House be like now? Right now? Yeah, if, if you ever went back as n now with all the life experience you've had since then, uh, what, would, what would you be like in the house now? Man, I, I feel like I'd dominate just because, you know, if everyone else wasn't themselves. <laughs> I have experience on him, but uh, I don't know. I, I think I've finally come full circle to my mentality back then. When I when I was one and zero on tough, I thought I was gonna destroy everyone, you know. And then I got humbled. But now that I've done a ton of fights, now that I've rounded out my skills everywhere, I'm back to that point where I feel like I can destroy everyone. It's just a matter of doing it. So. That's awesome. Last question. You, you mentioned the apex and how you uh, obviously would rather fight in front of fans. I think most fighters think the same way. And we've heard Dana say recently that we're trying to get out there. We're trying to get out of the apex. Do you feel like you can't fight to your best ability here in like an apex without like maybe the fans? Like do the fans allow you to go into that extra gear maybe or go super saiyan? Like <laughs> what's the difference? Are you able to fight to your best ability here in the apex without a crowd? I just think it's e I just think it's easier to fight with a crowd because they're hyping you up. It's like someone saying world star, you know, like you're not going to walk away from the fight then you got to do something. So um, you don't have that in the apex, not to the same extent. You hear people a little bit, but the coaches are loud and clear and it's, it's like sparring kind of. But at the same time, a lot of people perform better at the gym. So I think it's just a mentality shift. You got to figure out where you get your energy from. Are you going to use these outside sources to, to make you put on a better performance? Or are you going to dig within and, and use the grunts of your opponent to put, push you forward? So I think, uh, I think it's a lot easier to get in that space when there's a crowd pushing you and, and watching you and oohing and on. But like, yeah, I think the, the fighters who are more mentally strong, they're going to still do well the apex but it definitely makes a difference yeah and I, i'm sure coming to vegas you know everybody thinks about t-mobile arena they think about fighting down by the strip yeah. and then i'm sure it's maybe not as exciting when you say you're no we're not quite on the strip we're off of the freeway in a, in a warehouse type thing but is it still as special when you say you're fighting in vegas even though you know you're fighting in the apex um i think i think uh it's special when i know my friends can buy like the cheap seats and watch me from the bleachers, you know? And uh, that's that's the thing that sucks about the Apex is it's such a small arena that there's only a few seats and they're all like VIP sections. So um, I like, I, I, I love fighting in T-Mobile because I could walk back to the fighter hotel and people buy me drinks on the way. Like, hey, I just saw you fight. Oh, hey, it's the girl that fought, you know? So I, I don't know. There was something special about that when I used to do that uh, at the arena shows in Vegas. And uh, I'd be happy to move away from the Apex, but at the same time, I'm getting paid to fight in the Apex, so I'm super happy about the consistency of shows, too. Like, if we can move away from the Apex but still put on shows as frequently, then I'm all for it. But if not, like, put me in the Apex show. <laughs> I don't care. I just want to keep getting money, you know? So, um, yeah, the opportunity to make fun money is always great, but if it, if it were a choice, arena, always.